Okay, so in this problem we have block A, which has a weight of W, and we're told that it's suspended by a cord from a fixed point at O. A bullet B, having a block of little w, strikes the stationary block with a speed of VB1. On impact, the bullet actually sticks to block A. Given this information, we're asked to determine the maximum elevation angle theta in the cord after impact, and also, pardon me, it's, it's a little too far there, the energy lost during the impact event. Okay, so I think the important thing to note here is that we're going to have to split this problem into two parts. If we want to determine something like a maximum elevation angle, that's something that involves a change in position, so we're going to want to use the work-energy relationship. However, we know the work-energy relationship can account for the impact event, and so we're going to have to use something different, in this case, linear impulse momentum. So to help us out with that, I'm going to define three states in this problem. I'll define a state 1, which is pre-impact. I'll define a state 2, which is immediately after impact. And then I'll define a state 3, which is the point where we reach maximum elevation. And I'll use this information to try to solve the problem. So to help us out here, I'm going to start by looking at the system as we transition from 1 to 2. And if I draw a free by diagram of the system uh, during the impact event, we know that we'll have some force in the cord, which I'll call T. We'll have some net weight acting down, which I'll call W plus little w. But because a cord can actually carry a transverse load, we'll have no loads in the x direction. As a result of this, if I apply linear impulse momentum to the system in the x direction, where I define x in this case just to be, actually let's define it positive to the left, then what I'm going to have here is the initial momentum of the system will be the mass of block B, which will be little w divided by g. And by the way, I'll put little hats on the top of my big W to make it distinct here for you. And then I'll multiply that by its initial speed, which is VB1. And then post-impact, because the two objects stick together, I'll have big W plus little w divided by G, the total mass of the system, times the speed I'll call V2. So I can go ahead and work this out here. I note that the Gs are going to cancel out. And I'll get that the speed post-impact V2 is going to equal the weight of the bullet divided by the weight of the total system times VB1. Now, uh, at this juncture, once I have that, I can go ahead and look at the transition from 2 to 3. And if I look at the transition from 2 to 3, I can draw a free body diagram of that system. So maybe I should delineate here. I'm doing 2 to 3 now, and up here was actually 1 to 2. I'll just put a little note here to the side for us. And so if I do this, what I can say is the kinetic energy post-impact plus the potential energy post-impact plus the non-conservative work done moving from state 2 to state 3, non-conservative, will equal T3 plus V3. Now to do this, I'm going to need a datum. So let's go ahead and put our datum in this case at point O. It makes the math a little easier actually in this problem. And so if I do this, I'll have T2, which is going to be 1 half times M of the total system, which is going to be the weight of the block plus the weight of the bullet divided by g times v2 squared plus the initial potential energy of the system. The potential energy in this case is only due uh, to the distance we are below the datum. And I can verify this by drawing a free body diagram of the system at this instance. So in this case, we have the total weight acting down, and we have a tension force, and that's going to be it. So I'll have here v2 is going to be minus the weight of the system, so W plus W times L. I have no non-conservative work in this problem. At the point of maximum height, I'll have zero speed. And the datum at that instance is going to be equal to minus the total weight of the system, W plus W, times, in this case, L times the cosine of the angle theta max. Now, if I look at that equation, let's call this equation 2, and the initial equation up here, equation 1, what you'll quickly realize is that we have two equations, two unknowns. So you can use that and find theta max, what's the first unknown asked for in this problem. Now the second thing it asks for in this problem is to find uh, the amount of energy lost during the impact event. And so in that regard, and let me see if it asks for it on percentage or absolute basis, and just to remind myself, it asks for it on an absolute basis. So we know from 2 to 3, no energy is lost. And so if I want to look at the energy loss in the impact event, all I really just need to do here is take T2 and subtract off that T1. And so if I do this, I'm going to have 1 half times the total mass of the system, which is going to be W plus little w uh, divided by G times V2 squared. And I can subtract off of that the initial kinetic energy, which is minus the weight of just the bullet divided by G times VB1 quantity squared. 
So at this juncture, you can solve the two equations, two unknowns up top to get theta max, and you can plug in the numbers given to get a numerical value. And you can do a similar substitution down below to find the loss of kinetic energy. I think they're both relatively straightforward substitutions, so I'll leave those up for you to do. Best of luck, everybody. Take care.